Are you bummed that you're that we're, the garden will not be welcoming back? I actually don't even think the. I think with all the Julia stuff, we should talk about the Julia stuff. I think with all the Julia stuff going on, I bet you that it would have been a muted reaction anyway. I think Julius would have liked for KP to be back. <laughs> so there was attention focused in a different direction. Although if Porzingis had played the way he's been playing lately, maybe it actually would have just made things worse to be completely honest. Talk about a, uh, that's why I get like the notion that we tried to analyze that trade, like the, in the 24 to 48 hours after it happened, when there's mm-hmm. been like, I don't know how many back and forths at this point. Um, but you know, like people, like some smart people said at the time, check back in like seven years, uh, and we'll see. Two of two of those smart people host this podcast too. Like Jeremy was very vocal on like this is not something you determine the value or the winner of immediately. This is something that you know we're gonna know years from now. And I was I my biggest memory of that is like oh so we're getting Durant and Kyrie because you don't make this trade unless you know something yeah. via tampering and. Lo and behold, here we are. They can't even beat Brooklyn in their only way to play together. Excuse me. They can't even beat Portland in their only way to play together on the road last night. So that's uh, what a wild couple of years it's been. I actually I watched the end of that. I watched the second half of that Brooklyn game. They're they're not in a great place right now. Um, but we don't have to talk about the Nets. We should touch on Randall before we get to my conversation with uh, with Basic. Um, it it fe- like most topics. Like every every topic about this team because it's the Knicks there is a take cycle but it's usually there's a there's a thing that happens and then there's a take about the thing that happens and then there's a pushback to the take the thing that happened to the thing that happens and then that's pretty much it it feels like with this Julius thing which I don't even know what that means anymore when I say this Julius thing it feels like the cycle has now gone a few times around and it's like but it's not like I don't even know like where where are most people's opinions at? Do they like do they want him here? Do they want him gone? Do they do are they frustrated with him but they want him to stay but they feel bad for him? Like I like, I don't even know where people's heads are at. So there are levels to it. And I think the lazy answer is it's a bit of all of the above at the moment. I think it is. As, as human beings, we both like feel for Julius in a way that like it seemed like last season he Worked his butt off, got in shape, took on a leadership role, had all the workout videos you want to see from yeah. the supposed team leader coming into this season, was trying to make it work with all the new pieces. And just something happened at some point in this season. I can't pinpoint a moment where an effort level just stopped being there from him. And the body language went a certain direction. And I don't know if it has anything to do with Obi and the resurgence and the the fan favorite he's become. And it's gotten to a point now where last night RJ has the game. He has like IQ and, and Grimes have the really nice games. They had really nice games. And Randall's the story because he had two points. He was chirping back and forth with fans. And like you're chirping at I, someone. I, 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 I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't know. I wasn't there, obviously. And a lot of accounts that, that from people there were saying that he was chirping back, but that he heard it the entire night, basically. Oh, he's hearing he's hearing everything. Well, so that's where I have to think that a line was crossed. And that's that's not reporting. That's no factual basis. I just yeah. have to believe that something was said to him, whether it's like in the direction of his wife and kid in the direction of him about something personal that has made it that it's so adversarial now. And I don't like you took a little bit of shit today for the tweet you replied to that you would do. A, oh yeah. My fake, my, fr- I would, would I, do a Harrison you know what's Barnes funny about that? Mitchell trade. And I was like, in my I head, actually- it's like, that's a resolution to this issue if Julius if this situation gets more toxic not even thinking about the value back you know well it was good I could have made it worse I was gonna write I but I think Sacramento would say no Mm. (laughs) so that for anybody who's who is not on Twitter first of all fucking 
fantastic life decision by God you. God bless you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I should give myself a pat on the back. I, I literally go on to promote my, I ju- I'm just going to be honest. I go on there to promote my stuff and our stuff. Um, and then like give my occasional reply or two just to the people who take the time to, to, uh, you know, ask me a direct question, which I was replying to. Somebody was like, would you do, um, what was it? Julius and Knox for Harrison Barnes and, um, and Davion Mitchell. Mitchell. Who yeah. was the, I think, what was he, the number seven pick in the eight, nine, 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 nine pick, pick in the in draft. draft? Yeah. Um, not having a great season. Um, you know, has had a little bit of st- a stretch, but, you know, he's a decent prospect. Um, and I was like, yeah, I, I wouldn't think twice about it. I would happily do that. And I guess people thought I, I uh, had lost my mind um, because I, I guess people still think of the value of Ju- so that's a, there's two components to it right there's what is the value of Julius Randle the basketball player and then what is the situation in New York where are we at I mean it's never to the point of no return right like we've seen athletes go to way 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 way, way darker places with the fan base with the team with their teammates with like throughout New York sports history like it is not to that point yet like Julius could have two straight good games and like you know everyone's gonna be it's gonna be fine um, so I don't want to make it out to be like that. I just, I, I, that's not, I've responded more as a basketball trade, like from a value perspective, I think it's good value. And look, this is where I go back and forth between wondering if Twitter is like a vocal minority of the fan base. If it actually does drive a conversation of the fan base, like the booze you hear, is that because like Nick's Twitter said, let's start booing Randall or <laughs> I I don't. I, if it's just like not a real place, like Twitter is just our little bubble. I don't we think Twitter talk is. about the Knicks and then the real world has like a lot of Knicks fans. that are like, oh, damn, Randall's struggling, but he's got years to figure it out. Why is this like select few at the garden booing him so well, vociferously, though? It's an it's an interesting you, you bring up something interesting of the, the, the dynamic dynamic between how most Knicks fans feel and how select few few Nick fans feel because I think there are select pockets of Nick fans who feel very vociferous, vociferously in many different directions about Randall people who will defend him till, till, you know, t- to all end. Um, and then there's people who would just get him, get him off the team and who wanted him off the team even after last season, before the season had even begun. Um, you know, and then there's everything in the middle. I just, you know, I, I, look in terms of the leadership angle of it the 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 as long as he's here he's going to continue to take a lion's share of the offense and even if getting rid of him that will take a step back is that is there a path to then take two steps forward from that um you know type of decision i what you give me a look well this is where this is where we have to return to the conversation we had in the off season. And it's a reality that we all need to establish exists. Unless you think this front office would fire Tibbs or this front office would actually consider trading Julius Randall. Obi Toppin is a backup and is being used as one. And as much as we love him and we want to see him explore a ceiling here with the Knicks, like you might actually be able to use him as an asset. And what I fear, and I think a lot of Knicks fans would never want, but should prepare themselves for as we get closer to this deadline. You and I have talked about this off air. If you're going to trade Obi, they might actually consider Obi top in a trade asset, which makes you wonder if a way to kickstart Julius is to get rid of his backup. That is a fan favorite and show him personally. We are all in. The problem with that thinking, though, that I have gone back to the past couple of days is if it's not just that Obi's a fan favorite, but that Randall's become a villain, that's just bad business at a certain point. We opened this talking about the Porzingis trade. I almost wonder if the reaction to an Obi trade would be even worse. I, I don't know. Um, what I do know is Julius Randall in his last year in L.A., in which he averaged not and not insignificant 16 points a game, uh, played 27 minutes a night, had a um, 56.3 effective field goal percentage that year. He's almost 100 points mm-hmm. below that at 46.8, which is a far cry from last season, which was 51.6, which you could, which was not great, which was below the average for, I mean, if you look, just anyone could go and look at like, 
the high usage guys from last year, most of those guys are in the 60, 70, 80th percentile um, in, in um, points per shot attempt. And there's Julius down there in the forties. Yeah. And now he's, he's in the teens, you know, um, like it's safe it, to say this is his worst, like high usage season oh, of his career. Right. It It's, it's not even close. Yeah. And, and the thing, and like, the, just to touch on the Barnes thing one time, one more time, because like, I know people hear Harrison Barnes are like, oh yeah, the guy that's a bust that they got rid of. And Kevin Durant went there. Like that's not, Harrison Barnes anymore. Harrison Barnes is like a really solid role player. He's not a usage, a crazy usage guy. He's not, he's not going to, you know, um, change your world, but he's like a very, very solid number three, number four on a very good team. Unfortunately, he's had to be Sacramento's best player. And Oh, by the way, he's still damn efficient this year. How a lot more efficient than Julius. Like most contenders, if they had a choice between like, you could have Harrison Barnes on your team for the rest of this season or Julius Randall on your team for the rest of the season. I don't think there's a contender that would think twice about it. Especially this season's Julius Randle, where but that's, he's still high usage, can't play off ball. And like in theory, yeah, you take the guy that made second team all NBA last year and roll the dice that he figures it out. But you'd rather well, have a guy that you can count on to play off ball. That's the issue with any of these hypothetical trades that people were throwing out there. The the Atlanta trades that got thrown out last night. I just like, why is anybody accepting somebody onto their team that's going to take the ball out of Trey Young's hands. You're you're going you're 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 gonna if it ever gets done, and I don't I don't think it's gonna get. I just want to be very clear about that. I don't think there's I, not that I don't think that I a couple weeks ago I would have said there's not a chance in hell that they trade Julius Randle before the deadline. I won't say that. I still think it's highly unlikely, and it, it would take it would have to be a situation where the Knicks felt like they got an offer that they you know the Godfather offer an offer they couldn't refuse, and I just don't I don't know who's gonna make that. For, I think for it's Randall. an off. I think it's an off season offer. Too. Yeah, it's an off season yeah. thing. But but it, but just to 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 close the loop, and then we'll get to to the interview with Mike. Um, I I don't think like if you're in the Knicks front office right now, I'm not saying to Obi Obi Toppin's not and not changing anybody's life. All right, um, he is a he is a solid player. That if you put him in the rights, if you that's the other part of it is the Knicks don't really have the offense that could fully exploit Obi Toppin. You need to have. I mean, you need to have the, the the late aughts Suns teams that made Amari Stoudemire a first team All NBA player, like the best guard in the league. I was going to say, and you need the late aughts Suns personnel. That yeah, no, no, that's what, Steve Nash. No, I mean, that shift, uh, you, know? you need to have one of the most dynamic point guards in the league, um, and several other playmakers on the floor at the time at the same time who can just. That dude's just going to get twenty, you know, garbage points a game on fast breaks and and uh, and and duck ins and whatever else. Um, they don't have that personnel, so you know, I, it, it's like. It, so that being said about Obi, I don't think the next front office could just blindly go forward and being like, "Look, we don't have to make any decisions about these particular assets right now. We got Obi under contract for two and a half more years before he's restricted. We got Julius under contract for X amount more years. Like, I don't think, I don't think that's the best way forward. I feel like at some point in the near future, they at least internally need to decide. Like, look, we're going path A, we're going path B. Um, doesn't have to be right now. It doesn't even have to be before this trade deadline. But you know, rookie value. I believe. How do, do you remember, Mr. Andrew Claudio, the conversations that we had about Kevin Knox ahead of the trade deadline of his second season mm-hmm. when there was some hemming and hawing going on? Like, oh, well, wait, hold on. We can't can't trade Knox now. He's value, like, you know. Well, like as someone who's been part of the Knicks content machine the past couple of years, you notice some patterns and some trends. And there's a a portion of this fan base. I'm not even 100 percent sure how big the portion is that their favorite two games of the season so far were the two games that he was in protocol. You got to see the kids play a lot. You got to see Obi play 45 minutes one game. They got blown out, but it didn't matter because there was no expectations. They just wanted to see the kids play. And it took me back to 2019 when they were getting killed every night. The score didn't matter because it was going to be double digits at a certain point. You could stop watching somewhere around the second quarter And there was a lot of Knicks fans that said, this was one of my favorite seasons. I liked watching these kids develop. And then in the the world we knew before July, July 1st of Katie and Kyrie could still potentially come here. 
And do you then trade every asset you have for Anthony Davis? There was a sentiment of like, no, I don't want to trade the kids and all our assets for one player. I want to see those kids grow with this franchise. And it's it's where I, I go back to this thing. Like if that's if that's your thinking, some of you deserve David Fisdale. Some of you deserve a 65 loss team rather than one that gives you expectations, that gives you a playoff race to root for. And I think that is part of why Julius has had such a frustration this year. And this is honestly pure speculation because I, I don't know Julius. I don't know enough on the inside. But me personally, if I worked my butt off to give fans the season they had last year and within 20 games of the following year, calls for my backup to take away playing time from me rather than for me to be part of the solution and figuring it out and turning around to the point where we're like, hypothetically trading him to Sacramento. Like I empathize with his frustration. If that's where we are, don't start a war with the paying customer. That's just a dumb idea, but it's where I can understand as Stefan Bonnie laid out in that article, I can understand if this is why he's having such a hard time right now that the paying customer that he dedicated so much to last year has completely turned on him. Yeah, and uh, you know, you know, I love I, I exist in this weird place where like I love Obi Toppin, I love watching Obi Toppin. He's probably my I don't know, he's my second favorite Nick right now, maybe second, third. Um, but I'm also not someone that wants to fire Tibbs because he doesn't play Toppin, you know, 25 minutes a game. Um, so like I I don't I don't but uh, like logically it makes sense to get value for him well you can at the same time like that just screams to me like no that is not the way this organization should be operating right now and in my in my core i i i can't even say that i don't even know i don't know like if you ask me to put money on it right now we'll be top and be here after the trade deadline i i would flip a coin i would oh so you think it's you think it's closer to 50 50 oh i think i wouldn't feel confident putting money on either okay i think the funniest part the unintentional humor of all of this is the conversations we had throughout the off season where I yeah. finally was like, Tibbs is never going to do this. And then here we are. You're saying like, yeah, Tibbs was never going to do this now. And the fan base is like, why won't Tibbs play Ovi and Randall together? And meanwhile, this is established during the off season. He was I mean, never going to do this. Yeah, you were right. I was wrong on that. Well, no, it has nothing to do with right and wrong. It is solely about establishing a reality. We all can operate in when analyzing this team. Calling for Tibbs to play Obi at the five, as Fred said last week, as we were all arguing with you about this offseason, is not just something schematically that Tibbs won't go to. It's philosophically against who he is. He needs us an established rim protector, a true center. That's just like who he is as a coach, which is why I was like, what are we doing thinking Tibbs is actually going to do this this offseason. It's why now I think you're feeling some of that frustration that fans are calling for the f- hashtag free Obi. And it's like, you don't understand who the coach is calling for Obi to play the five in a Tibbs system. is like going to the Yankees and saying, why does an Aaron judge hit left handed like short porch is right there. Why wouldn't you have him bat lefty? So this way he's got a shorter distance to a home run. Yeah. Cause they're, they were never going to do that. I think it's that radical a change to his philosophy as Fred Katz laid out last week. So, like, look, I I think the, the thing we didn't factor in was like the drop off for Julius and then potential villainization of Julius might make one of the radical situations of either trade Obi, trade Julius or fire Tibbs. Like the trade Julius might actually be closer to the coin toss you were talking about, but it's why the the logical solution that I see is that if Tibbs is going to treat him as a backup, unless I see them, any report float out there that like Tibbs' job is in jeopardy or Julius could be available, I, I think we should all brace ourselves for what could potentially happen with this this young Dayton star that we've fallen in love with. Well, I, look, I, I'm... If Ju- if they if they are really going to entertain if they would open their minds up to the notion of potentially moving on from Randall that's a different story because then I do think again Toppin not a life changing piece but a good enough piece that you could feel 
like, okay, we have something here. We don't know exactly what we have, but we think it's pretty good. And we, you know, we'll, we'll play this out and we'll, we'll see where it goes. I don't know. Um, he needs to learn how to shoot. Um, how's that? <laughs> For- he needs to make defense is a little more honest when he's in the corner. Yes. Uh, yes. Just yes. a bit. Okay. 